Good evening and welcome to 60 Seconds for Friday, July 31st, 2020. I'd like to remind you this program goes to once a week until the last week of August when classes begin in the Sunnyside School District one way or the other. This lady here you see in the picture is the census lady. She came, she's part of taking the census. It's very important for you to be accurate in the census. They just need to know how many people are living there. They aren't going to get any information that's going to cause problems with any legal system or immigration, but it's important that everyone be counted because the school district and all sorts of uh, programs for the government and roads and highways, and it's an incredible list, receive money on the basis of how many people are living in the district. So if you don't get counted, we receive less benefit. So please, please uh, receive these census people. They, okay. Uh, next weekend, this coming weekend, so Friday is August 7th, 8th, 9th, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're going to begin catching up on the sacraments that we've had to postpone because of the coronavirus. So next weekend, uh, 7th, 8th, and 9th, we will begin, there will be a first reconciliation, re reconciliation from 4.30 to 7, 4.30 to 6 on Friday nights, on Friday nights, 4.30 to 6, reconciliation and confession, but it's restricted. It's only to First Communion candidates, to confirmation candidates, to godparents, and guests of the candidates with tickets. And those confessions, you will enter there behind the food bank. You will enter there. So we, the First Communion Masses will also be out there behind the food bank. So just you enter there for confessions and you enter there for First Communion Masses. We'll be doing First Communions. Uh, I'm not doing them in a large group because some places you can only have the parents there. Uh, and I thought you'd want more people present, so it's going to take a lot more Masses. But what we're going to do, we're going to have seven, seven, limit of seven candidates at each of these Masses on Friday and Saturday. Friday night at 7 p.m., seven candidates. Saturday at 9 in the morning and 11 in the morning, each of those can have seven candidates to receive the First Communion. Each candidate will receive 12 tickets. One will be for the candidate himself or herself, and then the candidate can decide what other 11 people will get a ticket. So it would probably be mom and dad, godparents, but I leave that up to you, grandma, grandpa, aunt and uncle, friends of the family, but each candidate will be able to give 11 tickets and keep one for themselves to get in. You can pick up tickets now, regular office hours, Tuesday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. Tuesday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. So you can just go to that window there and you will see Elizabeth on the other side of that window. So all the masses will be behind the food bank. They'll, you have to wear a mask, and you will need a ticket to get into the mass. It's actually a very beautiful setting. I've wanted to do masses there for years, and now we have an excuse. I didn't plan on doing it with masks, but that's what it is. So yes, you will need a mask, and you will need a ticket to come into these uh, uh, masses. And then on sun Saturday, the regular schedule for Saturday and Sunday will change starting that weekend of August, 7, 8, and 9. And the English Mass will be at 6, 7.30 will be the Spanish Mass. And on Sunday, just one Mass in Spanish at 6 p.m. On a Tuesday, on Tuesday, August 11th, we will be confirming the high school students who completed their preparation for confirmation, seniors, excuse me, the seniors. We will be confirming the seniors on August 11th, Tuesday. Uh, so th that will be then. And then we will be confirming the adults on August 18th. Those are in RCIA, August 18th, August 18th. So the seniors, August 11th, Tuesday, confirmation. August 18th, adults 
in the RCIA program. Okay, so that's so far. I hope you're still with me. Okay, September 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, and the 13th, we will be confirming all the other candidates who want to be confirmed. On September 19th, reconciliation confession will be available during the regular Saturday schedule for all others. So up until September 19, reconciliation confession is only for candidates and their invited guests for the confirmation and first communion. I'd like to remind you that 60 Seconds uh, has been going on every night for several months now since the coronavirus uh, change has occurred, trying to keep you informed and keep you prayerful. So 60 Seconds in the Final Prayer has been going Monday through Friday uh, and now at 9 p.m., one in English, one in Spanish. It will now go to one day a week, one day a week until the last week of August when classes begin in the Sunnyside School District. Daily Mass, which has been Monday through Friday English at 9 and 10 in Spanish, will go to once a week until the week when school starts in the district. So those are the changes. So we're starting to catch up on the First Communions and trying to catch up on the uh, confirmations. And catch up on uh, all those who will need to go to confession or reconciliation uh, before receiving those sacraments, plus their invited guests. So please, uh, all others, please wait until September 19th for a regular confession schedule. Today is the feast of St. Ignatius Loyola, founder of the Jesuits, my order. So very happy to be celebrating this with you today. I'm going to offer you several prayers and reflections of St. Ignatius. First is his famous prayer, Soul of Christ, Ama Christi. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Permit me not to be separated from you. From the wicked foe, defend me. And at the hour of death, call me. And bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Beautiful prayer. St. Ignatius kept a diary of it, trying to sort out his life and his depressions, his disappointments, and his, really the growth of his spiritual life, his conversion. And at the, he wrote that into a process we call the spiritual exercise of St. Ignatius. It's a handbook. It's not something you're going to read for devotional reading. And you need someone who knows how to work the handbook to do it. But at the beginning of it, he talks about a first principle and foundation. The goal of our life is to live with God forever. God, who loves us, gave us life. Our own response of love allows God's life to flow into us without limit. All the things in this world are gifts from God, presented to us so that we may know God more easily and make a return of love more readily. As a result, we appreciate and use all these gifts of God insofar as they help us to develop as loving persons. But if any of these gifts become the center of our lives, they displace God, and so hinder our growth toward our goal. In everyday life, then, we must hold ourselves in balance. Before all of these created gifts, insofar as we have a choice and are not bound by some obligation, we should not fix our desires on health or sickness, wealth or poverty, success or failure, a long life or a short one. For everything has the potential of calling forth in us a deeper response to our life in God. Our only desire and our one choice should be this. I want and I choose what better leads to God's deepening his life in me. The first principle and foundation of St. Ignatius Loyola. 
Father Joe Whalen, a Jesuit, wrote in, oh, in the 70s, I think, he wrote this passage, which is so uh, often quoted by Jesuits and others. It's called Fall in Love. Nothing is more practical than finding God, than falling in love in a quite absolute final way. What you are in love with, what seizes your imagination, will affect everything. It will decide what will get you out of bed in the morning and what to do with your evenings, how you spend your weekends, what you read, whom you know, what breaks your heart, and what amazes you with joy and gratitude. Fall in love, stay in love, and it will decide everything. Joseph Whalen of the Society of Jesus, 1981. St. Ignatius, there's a famous prayer called St. Ignatius' Prayer for Generosity. It's somewhat disputed whether he wrote it, but it's a beautiful prayer. Eternal word, only begotten Son of God, teach me true generosity. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give without counting the cost, to fight heedless of wounds, to labor without seeking rest, to sacrifice myself without thought of any reward, save the knowledge that I have done your will. Amen. Pope Paul said something to the Jesuits in his address to them as one of my favorite passages about the Jesuits. If you want to know what, who the Jesuits are, what they are, well, I like this as a quick passage. Wherever in the church, even in the most difficult and extreme fields, at the crossroads of ideologies, in the social trenches, there has been and there is confrontation between the burning exigency of man and the perennial message of the gospel here also, there have been and there are Jesuits. Addressed to the 32nd Congregation of the Jesuits, December 1974. And I conclude with a final prayer that Ignatius tries to move the heart and mind to be able to express not only in words, but in real belief and strength at the end of a 30-day silent retreat. Sushipe, I learned it in Latin, which in English would be, take, Lord. This is a prayer we as Jesuits, you will hear our vows, you will hear our ordinations. Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will. All I have and call my own, you have given all to me. To you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. Good evening, good night, and thank you for being with us again. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>